Hi everyone, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today to show you how to attach bias binding. So I'll show you lots and lots of different methods and different tools you can use. Everything I talk about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to our website and all the products I mentioned below. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe because every Friday I'll bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. If you can't wait a whole week, do jump on and check out our other social media accounts. So the video I'll take you through step by step, lots of tutorials, lots of different methods for how to attach bias binding, both ready made and both uh, bias binding that you might want to make yourself. I don't show you how to make the bias binding in this video but I will create a separate video to show you that. But essentially you just cut strips of fabric on the bias 45, at 45 degree angles um, to the grain line. So I'll also show you um, how to use bias binding feet for your sewing machine as well. So lots of different ideas, lots of food for thought and I just want to show you some of the key tools I use in the video. So I use my Prim Mini Iron for pressing the binding. One of these is really useful for these little fiddly tasks such as bias binding. And with that I used my Prim Mini Ironing Board or Sleeve Board. Again really useful if you're short on space um, and for those just little fiddly tasks you might not want to get your full ironing board out for um, some of these jobs. To create the bias binding that I created myself, I used my quilters ruler. All of these products are linked below, so you'll be able to find them below and find them on our website and lots of other options as well. Um, these are just the ones that I use. And I used my rotary cutter. We've got a wide range of these on the website as well. And I'll link that particular one below. And I used my prim cutting mat. Um, as well but again we've got a really wide range of those on the website too and then I also demonstrated a um, bias binding foot um, this was the one that I used on my brilliant 75Q Husqvarna machine so I'll link that below but also we do stock these feet for a really wide range of make and model of machine on our website um, so I'll pop links to where you can find those below and then I also used an adjustable bias binder foot and again I'll pop links um, to your options for these below where you can find them on our site. So let's get started with the tutorial. For this method of attaching bias binding, I'm using a ready-made binding. So you'll find this on our website. We do a range of different widths. I think this is the 15 millimeter width. Um, we do narrower ones, wider ones. And the principles are always the same. We do satin and um, cotton as well. But the principles are the same. You'll have a right side of the binding where everything's nice and smooth and you'll have the wrong side of the binding where you'll see that the raw edges have been folded in. And the reason for that is you will sew along the fold, uh, along one of the folds to attach the binding to the garment initially. And you will notice that one of the folds is slightly narrower than the other. So it's the narrow one you want to use to attach it to the garment. And then that will allow you to fold the rest of the binding over to, sti to stitch everything in place. And this will become clear later in the tutorial when I demonstrate how that works. So with this binding, again, you can either have it visible from the right side of the garment. So you can have half the width of the binding visible from the right side of the garment. You could have the full width visible from the right side of the garment or you could have it completely invisible inside the garment and I'll show you all those different methods. So if I just start by the, the binding as well, because it's cut on the bias, it will move nicely round curves. That's why it's cut on the bias so that you're able to use it on necklines and armholes. And this folded bias is perfect for using in the round. So when you are sewing an armhole or a neckline, for example, um, this, this folded bias is a great option. Um, you can create your own bias to match your garments. And um, if you do that, you just need to press one of the sides under 
um, because that will be your finished edge inside the garment, whether you have the visible binding or the hidden away binding, you will need a folded edge for these methods that I'm going to show you. So I'm just go I've got it pinned in place around the curve and I'm just going to stitch along that fold and I'm using a dark coloured thread. I wouldn't normally use a contrasting thread like this, but obviously for the purposes of the video, I want things to be nice and visible for people. So I'm using that contrasting black thread, but I wouldn't normally do that. I'd normally match the colour nicely. So let's just get started and sew around this curve. Okay, so we've now attached the binding to the neckline or to the curve with the narrowest, uh, the narrowest edge of the binding. Here we have the ready-made bias binding attached to a curve. So it's been sewn right sides together with the fabric around the curve. And we're just going to press the seam allowances towards the binding but we're going to be careful not to unpress this fold the other fold on the ready-made bias because we're going to be using that um, I'm just using my prim iron here to do this and my little mini prim sleeve ironing board and these are great tools for these little fiddly jobs that we often come across in sewing um, or if you're short on space in your you know in your sewing area and you can't be bothered to keep getting the big full-size ironing board and iron out these can be real time savers and space savers for people so I've just ironed round that curve there pressed the seam allowances towards the binding and then what I'll be able to do is to fold that binding over and with this method the binding will still be visible from the right side half the binding will be visible from the right side but I can just fold that over and press that in place and again you can get different widths of ready-made bias binding you know if you want a little bit more visible um, if you want to do this method but you'd like a little bit more um, binding visible a little bit of a wider binding you can use a wider binding than me um, just experiment as always you know you can cut out little scraps of fabric like I've done for the video um, and use that just to test and see how how you like to do things and what finish you prefer you know and although that might feel sometimes like a waste of time because you're not actually sewing a garment it's all learning and it all helps you to perfect your skills ready for when you are sewing those garments so I've pressed that under and if I turn it to the right side you can see we've got that lovely half width of binding visible now from the right side of the garment so we just need to take that to the sewing machine and stitch it with our preferred method here we have half the visible half the binding visible from the right side and half the binding visible from the wrong side so you've got various different options here to um, secure this in place so if you hand sew or slip stitch it in place on the inside as long as you know it's not a really sort of thick bulky fabric and a, a slip stitch is going to be strong enough to keep everything in place um, that's a nice neat finish and will guarantee you catch everything I've done that on quite a few different garments the other option you've got is you could stitch in the ditch from the right side however you do run the risk there of not quite catching everything on the inside so as you can see I've um, sewn my pins, I've placed my pins sorry, along that seam line which is where you would be stitching if you stitched in the ditch you'd be stitching where the binding meets the garments to secure everything and by pinning along that line you can see that if you stitch 
in that right place you should catch the fabric. Um, you can also just try and make sure that you put a bit more binding over on this side than the other side so that it gives you a better chance of catching it. But again, really to, to make life easy for yourself, just top stitching the binding in place is another option that is easier. And you because you're going to be stitching on the binding, you're more likely to catch everything. So I'm just going to use that method now. So again, I'm going to top stitch and I'm gonna use the edge of the binding as my guide. I've used a contrast thread there so that you can see um, the stitching, that it looks nice and neat, but you could obviously match the thread to your binding if you prefer, or you could do the stitch in the ditch or the slip stitch as I suggested at the start. And that's the inside nice and neat in there as well. Here we have another example with the ready-made bias attached to the curve, right sides together. So again, I've pressed those seam allowances towards the binding um, so that everything's lying nice and flat. It's so, so important to do the pressing. It might not be the most exciting aspect of sewing, but it really does give you those professional results and a nice, neat finish. And then in this example, if you didn't want to have the binding visible, you can either fold it all the way over and press that down and then secure it in place so that you'll have no binding visible from the front of the garment and all the binding will be sat inside the garment like so. Or you could do a half fold and then fold again so that you've got a narrower piece of binding sitting inside the garment and again, nothing is visible from the outside. So it depends what look you want to go for. It depends how thick your fabric is as well. Just bear in mind that the double fold might be a little bit bulky with some fabrics perhaps. Certainly not with this lightweight chambray I'm using here and this satin bias, that doesn't feel bulky at all. It's sitting really nicely. Um, but in other fabrics, you might need to just bear that in mind. The other thing is as well, of course, if you fold it over in its entirety, it's not such a narrow strip to work with. So when you're stitching it in place, it might be a little bit easier. Having said that, um, obviously it will dictate where your stitching line sits because if you fold it over in its entirety, you're going to want the stitching line to be down here somewhere to catch it. So you're going to have a wider, your top stitching is going to be further away from the neckline than if you did the double fold, it would be nearer. So all of these things, they really are down to personal preference. There's no right or wrong, you know, it's whatever you like and whatever works for you. And don't be afraid to just make some little samples like I've done here for the video and just have a play around and see what you like, see what works for you, see what you get the best results with. You know, that's the aim of the game with these videos really is to give you the confidence to find your own way and the things you like to do, things the way you like to do things. You know, it doesn't always have to be um, the conventional methods. It can be what you prefer, what you find easiest, what gives you the best results. And again, it will often change depending on the type of fabric you're using as well. So I've pressed the full width of the binding down there for this example, and you can see from the right side that won't be visible. You just need to make sure you roll it to the inside of the garment so it's not visible, and then you'd be able to top stitch that down. Here I have the example where the binding is pressed completely to the inside of the garment. So I've pinned that in place now, ready to stitch. I always like to pin things to just make sure I get a really nice, neat finish. Um, and then you need to stitch an equal distance from the edge of the neckline all the way around to get a nice, neat finish. So if you've got a nice balanced stitch on your machine, you could sew 
from the wrong side just so that you can be confident that you're catching the binding all the way round. However, my tip here would be to always use a, use a marker from the edge of the neckline rather than the edge of the binding because if you haven't folded or sewn that binding evenly and you follow the edge of the binding as a guide for your top stitching you might end up with a stitch that's further away from the neck edge in parts than others um, so do use the edge of the neckline as your guide that you're using a marker for however um, if you've got, if you're confident at uh, getting it even, you know, really it is better to sew it from the right side of the garment. And one of the things that makes it a lot easier is using a foot like this seam guide foot. This is on my brilliant 75Q machine, which is a Husqvarna machine. And this foot works on a wide range of the Husqvarna machines. I'll pop a link to it below. Um, not all brands do one of these sorts of feet, but there's edge stitching feet and quarter inch feet, which have got markings on them. And we do lots of other brands of machine as well. So do check out the links below but if you can't find one for your machine you can use one of these magnetic seam guides on it and you can just line that up with the needle plate marking and use that as a guide um, all of these things just help you really do very accurate even stitching so I'm just going to have a look now at how, where I want to stitch this so I think I want to sew it, if I try to sew it at half an inch I might just miss, miss the edge in a couple of places if I haven't pressed that entirely evenly. So I'm going to stitch that down with a 3 8 of an inch seam. So I'll just start at one end and work my way around back tacking at the beginning and end in the usual way. I'm going to use needle up down going around the curves as well. This is when you can choose to stop with your needle in the down position and that is great for manoeuvring your way around curves. I've used a contrasting thread there so you can see what I've done but you might want to use a matching thread but you can see that's lovely and neat using the needle up down obviously as well when you stop the needle goes down the foot raises a little bit so it allows the fabric to just um, maneuver so that you don't get any nasty bumps or tucks but you can see that's a lovely neat finish there and then on the inside we've got a neat finish as well. The other option you've got here is you could hand sew, you could slip stitch the binding in place if you wanted to, if you didn't want any top stitching visible from the right side of the garment. So that's just another option for you to consider. Another option you have with folded bias is to have the full width of the bias visible from the right side of the garment. So in the previous examples where we had either the half width of the binding visible or the binding not visible from the outside of the garment, we sewed the right side of the binding to the right side of the fabric. As you can see here, so we sewed the right side of the binding to the right side of the fabric so it would then be able to be folded over like so for a half width or completely folded under for not visible. If you want the binding to be visible from the outside of the garment, the full width of the binding to be visible, in this instance you would sew the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the garment. So I'm just going to stitch that in place now. 
there you have it, the binding is attached right side of the binding to the wrong side of the garment. In this example, we've sewn the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the fabric and that is so that you can have the binding visible from the right side of the fabric. So in this example, again, as always, you would press those seam allowances towards the binding, taking care not to open the fold on the other side of the binding. So it's where your little mini iron comes in handy for little fiddly tasks like this. Just press all the way around the neckline, pressing those seam allowances towards the binding. And then you would bring the binding over and again you could do the half width or the full width bring that over to the right side of the garment and you can just see how nicely the binding works around the curves I just love the way it sits so nicely because of it is cut on the bias and it's designed to work its way around those curves it just looks so nice and neat you can see there I think I've used a narrower width of binding for this example Does get very very hot <laughs> which I know sounds obvious because it's an iron but you know you wouldn't expect such a little little tool as this to be so powerful but it is I can assure you but there you go you can see now we would be able to top stitch that down and have that binding visible from the right side of the garment In this example, the full width of the binding is pressed to the right side of the garment, so there's nothing visible on the inside, and I've pressed the full width of the binding to the outside of the garment, so I just need to top stitch that down now. You could possibly hand sew it in place, but whether it would look really neat for the outside of the garment, I'm not sure. I would much rather top stitch that. And then here, I probably would work from the binding for the top stitching this time because I think the top stitching being an equal, if the top stitching, if you work from the edge of the neckline, again, if you haven't pressed the binding down evenly, you might end up with your stitching um, not evenly distributed around the edge of the binding. And I think that's going to be more obvious. I think that's where the focus will be on this example. So I'm just going to look at... I'm just going to get myself a little marker. I think I'm going to just use the little plastic bit of my foot there to line that up with the edge of the binding this time. Because I, I think it's more important for the stitching to be an equal distance from the edge of the binding than the neckline on this example. You might feel differently and if you do, by all means use the, your neckline edge as a marker, but I'm going to use the binding edge as my marker for this example. Again, using needle up down and just allowing the fabric to fall, not being tempted to push the fabric through or try and manipulate it in any way. And that will just let it sit nicely around those curves. And if the fabric does start bunching up a little bit, when you stop, if you stop with your needle down and the foot lifts, it just allows it to manoeuvre and full where it needs to. 
and you can see there we've got a lovely super neat binding the stitching looks nice and even because I've done it an equal distance from the edge of the binding which is where the focus is and then from the inside there's nothing visible and I'd just give that a nice press and you've got a super neat finish. This is an unconventional way to use bias binding, but I wanted to show you because it just gives you more options again. So rather than having a folded edge on the bias binding, I've put an overlocked edge. Now you could still do the fold of course, and I've made this bias binding myself by just cutting strips on a 45 degree angle on the fabric. Um, but there's different ways that you can finish this and you could create a loop with this bias binding. So to do that, you would just cross the edges over so that they were at right angles to each other and then you would stitch on the diagonal from one corner to the other and that would create a loop and you could use that on a neckline or an armhole. The only thing is I'm not sure how well the overlocking stitches would sit, whether they'd sit as well as the folded edge of the bias. I suppose it depends how, how wide you made it really. But the places that I've used this method before that worked really nicely were I had a faux wrap dress that had a crossover neckline so the seam started and ended separately and this was a lovely way, a lovely neat way to finish that neckline and that's the thing about bias binding, it can get you out of all sorts of trouble if you're not sure how to finish something or you were going to make a dress with sleeves and you change your mind and want to make it sleeveless, some of these options can be really really useful way to, to finish those raw edges. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can use this. So I'm just going to start by attaching this strip of bias that I've created to the main fabric right sides together and obviously you know the widths you choose are down to you. I think I've done this strip of bias about one and a half inches wide initially um, so that I'm able to do a 5 8 seam allowance as if I was finishing the neckline of a dress and it had a 5 8 seam. So I'll just stitch that in place in the usual way. And I'll show you a couple of different methods, but I would then trim the excess down from the seam allowance and I'll show you the next steps, but you've got options for a visible binding or a hidden binding here, so I'll show you that in a minute. Here we have one of the unconventional methods. So this is to have a visible binding from the right side of the garment. So you saw me sew the strip of bias binding with the overlocked edge to the main garment fabric. And then in the same way as I've done with all the ready-made bias binding, I've just pressed the seam allowances towards the binding. I've then pressed the binding over that seam allowance so that it definitely covers that seam line and the binding is still visible from the right side of the garment. So you can see here, that you've got a little narrow binding that's visible from the right side of the garment. And then to secure that in place, I would just stitch in the ditch because with this binding, you've not got, it's not so tight because you haven't got the fold, you've got that flat edge. And I was able to maneuver it so that I've given myself plenty of fabric to secure that on the inside of the fabric. Um, and it just lies nice and flat as well because of the overlocked edge. It's not as bulky as a fold, so it can be beneficial in that respect as well. So I'll just stitch in the ditch with, um, I've chosen a matching thread to the blue. 
and I would normally stitch in the ditch with just a clear A foot um, or we've got stitch in the ditch feet which you can find on our website I'll pop links to those below I haven't brought my A foot in with me today though so I'm just going to use this one because it's clear so I can see what I'm doing and also it's quite difficult for me to stitch in the ditch on these videos because normally I would have my head about here <laughs> and um, I'd be watching over the top of the needle but it's a bit more difficult to do that because obviously I don't want to obscure your view so bear with me hopefully the results will be as good as usual So I'm just sewing where the seam line is, where the two fabrics join, the binding and the main garment fabric. And the trick is with stitching in the ditch as well, to just really take your time, there's no rush. Actually incredibly satisfying when it hits right in the right spot as well. And um, yeah, just a, just a nice sort of therapeutic mindful task to do, lots of concentration required. So you can see there the stitches aren't visible from the right side. Oh, really pleased with how that turned out actually. Um, so yeah, the stitches are hidden in that seam line. You've got the visible binding and then on the inside, it's a white thread in the bobbin thread so you can't quite see that there, but I've caught the inside there as well. Um, so it's a lovely, neat finish and just a nice, easy way if you haven't got a pack of ready-made bias binding, available at home you know it's a nice easy way to get that neat finish another unconventional example for you so with this one i've turned the binding entirely to the wrong side of the garment so it won't be visible from the right side and that is the wrong side so again i press the seam allowances up towards the binding and then I've just folded the binding completely over and pressed that in place. I should, should just say as well, um, I wouldn't necessarily do this with this design. Um, I just did it so that it was nice. It was a nice light coloured cotton, so it was nice and visible for you. But generally, a more busy pattern would probably work better for this idea with the visible binding. Um, but yeah, let's just go back to this one where the binding won't be visible from the right side of the garment. So all you would need to do there is just top stitch that down. And again, it's all down to personal preference, how wide you want the binding to be, um, how deep, like far from the neckline you want your top stitching to be. So with this one, I'm gonna go for three eighths of an inch, I think which should catch the binding on the inside. And again, it's personal preference whether you choose to use a contrasting top stitch thread um, or match it like I've done. Um, but you can see that's top stitched down in place. Now I'd give that a nice press as well. And then from the wrong side, it, everything's caught and secured on the wrong side as well. So a lovely, neat finish there. And another example of how you can use this ready, uh, this bias binding that you can make yourself. Um, and again, you know, the width of the binding, how far you want your top stitching from the edge of the fabric, all of that's down to personal choice. So you can really get creative and do what you prefer. When sewing in the round, such as an armhole, where it's a continuous circle or a neckline that's a continuous circle, you're going to need to join the bias at the end. And there's two different ways that you can do this. One of them is the more professional method. However, it is a little more tricky. And then there's a method that's really easy that I'll show you as well as an alternative. 
Um, so the more professional method is to measure the circumference of the armhole. So I'd take my tape measure, start at the shoulder seam, so I knew, knew where I'd started, and I would just work my way along the edge of the fabric like so until I got back to the shoulder seam and that would give me my armhole circumference and then for the more professional method you would attempt to create a loop of bias binding that would fit that armhole. Now it's tricky because different fabrics behave differently whereas some fabrics have got lots and lots of give cut on the bias other fabrics like this cotton there's not a great deal even though it is cut on the bias whereas say a viscose fabric or perhaps a crepe might have a lot more give so it's going to vary really how long you need to make that bias to fit the armhole um, sometimes you'll need to make it the same size sometimes you might need a little bit extra bias um, but what you can do to solve that problem and to work it out is I would suggest cutting a strip of bias that's much, much longer than the circumference of the armhole, pinning it in place first and testing it and then stitching it together to create your loop of bias binding once you're happy that it will fit that armhole. Um, and that's what I did recently when I used this method on a dress. And to join the bias, the really professional way to do it is to cross the bias over like so and then stitch like you would for a mitered corner, stitch from that corner to that corner down there diagonally and it will give you a nice diagonal seam which will help everything to sit really flat and neatly. Um, so yeah, you just pin across there like so and then you would stitch from that top corner back tacking at the end to the far corner where the pin head is back tack at that end as well and that will give you a nice diagonal seam which will sit really lovely and flat in your garment so all you would do then is just trim off that little triangle of fabric and any thread ends that you've got lying around just trim those off press the seam press the seam open and then like I say you've got a lovely diagonal seam there which will sit really nice and flat against the garment so that's the trickier way and you would just place the binding round the armhole put the join of the binding underneath the arm so that that's hidden away and then you would simply pin that in place round the armhole in the usual way and then sew it into place in whichever method you prefer. So you'd work your way all the way around the armhole till it was pinned in place like so. I haven't made the binding the right size for this armhole but you can see the principle there. You'd work your way all the way around and then you'd just stitch that continuously in place. The other method for joining the bias, which is easier, and some might argue not as professional, but I think perfectly acceptable and a really common way of doing it, is to pin the bias round the armhole and then to work out where you need to join it. Now, you could either sew it to the armhole and leave a gap of about an inch either side of the underarm seam, um, or you can just pin it in place like I have done and then work out where your binding needs to join. So you can see there, I've got the binding in place. I can see the side seam is there. So if I just fold it back on itself, if I open it up and just fold it back on itself where that underarm seam is, I know that that is where the join of the bias needs to be in order to fit the armhole.
and then I would do the same on the other side usually with bias binding you can just give it a bit of a finger press and that will give you the relevant marking and then I can do the other side as well so just open it out see where that underarm seam is and just give that a finger press as well and then I haven't sewn anything to the armhole yet. What I can do then is just join my bias in the right place. I can use those finger press marks, line those up with one another, and then just stitch that together. So right sides together, open up the folds. And just use those finger press marks as a guide. I can just pop a little pin in there to secure it as well. I'm using a slippy satin bias here, so a little bit slippy, but yep. Yeah. Naughty sewing over pins. Probably best not to do that. Just ignore that I did that. Just back to at either end to secure. And then you can just snip the ends off. You'd press that seam open. And then you can just repin to the armhole. You can line up the join of the bias binding with the underarm seam. And then you're in a position there, you've got the binding fits the armhole, you can stitch it down whichever method you prefer, but you can stitch it all in one without having to leave a gap. Um, and that works really nicely. The reason people say it's not as professional is because it is a little bit bulkier than if you've got the diagonal seam and it might not sit quite as flat. But I think what you've got to always remember with this is that it's underneath the arm, so nobody's going to see this. And when you insert a sleeve, there's always a little bit of bulk where the sleeve seam meets the underarm seam. So personally, I really don't think that's an issue. This is a bias binder foot. So I just wanted to show you this because this is a great way to attach binding to the edge of the fabric. Um, it will be top stitched down, but this little foot actually you insert, this is a quarter inch binder, so it's a set size, and you insert a one inch wide piece of binding into this little groove, tunnel, whatever you want to call it here, that feeds through and it, it folds it, it comes underneath the foot there and then you can stitch it in place with a top stitch and it will, in you slip your main fabric in between where the binding's folded and as you stitch it secures it to that main piece of fabric. It works in a very similar way or pretty much exactly the same way actually as the cover stitch bias binder which is amazing if you sew with jersey a lot it will give you a super professional finish to neck lines on jersey fabrics and I did a tutorial on that on the blog on the vlog ages ago I'll pop a link to that below because that's an awesome tool as well if you like to sew knits and you've got a cover stitch machine but let me just show you this option for the sewing machine first so I've got a piece of one inch wide binding that I've cut here um, sometimes it's a bit easier if you've got a diagonal on the end like that um, to feed it through because what you do is you just feed that into the end of the foot like so. You might need, it can be a bit fiddly, you might need a pin or a pair of tweezers just to pull it through the other end. I've managed to do that because it's on the diagonal, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then as I pull that through, you can see it's folding it um, all in one. So then all I have to do as I sew is just insert my fabric in the gap there. And as I sew, that will top stitch the binding down to the edge of the fabric. So I'll just show you that now. Before I start sewing as well, I should have just mentioned that this, I'm, I'm sewing on the Husqvarna Brilliant 75Q um, and this is a foot that fits, I think, group, machine groups, 
Um, I think it's one to seven. I'll pop a link to it below and all that information is on the website anyway. Um, but we do stock these for a wide range of brands. We've got Janome, Brother, Faf, Husvana. Um, so do jump on and have a look because we've probably got one for your make and model of machine. Just check the comp compatibility charts to make sure it's compatible. So there's a little hole in the foot um, just in front of where it attaches which is common to most sewing machine feet. And I've just put the thread through there. And it's always wise to work with a piece of binding then that's longer than um, you need so that you can get started and just get it through like I've done. Um, the other thing to mention as well is you could use this to finish in the round, um, but it can be quite tricky to do that. What the other option to do is to leave um, some long ends and leave a little gap if you're sewing in the round, like round an armhole or a neckline, and then finish it off um, manually at the end if you want to. But as with all of these things, just have a go, try it out, see how it feels for you. So now I'm just going to insert the fabric that I want to attach the binding to into the foot. So I'm going to make sure that it's pressed right up against the edge of the foot inside of this sort of little tunnel. And then it can be a little bit fiddly, but once you get going, it's super easy. So I've just inserted that in there. I'm just going to start sewing. And as I sew, it will feed the fabric through. Okay, so, and then if you just sort of hold your fabric at a bit of an angle like this, it'll feed through nicely. And just keep sewing, keep making sure everything's in the correct position. Make sure your fabric's butted up against the inside of the foot. And just you know, take it easy. If it's the first time you've used it, just take your time. And you can see there what a lovely, neat finish that is. Super easy, so much easier than doing it manually. Um, it's caught all of the edges. It just looks absolutely lovely. So what a great little tool that is. And as I said, you can find these um, in different sizes for a wide range of different machines on our website and I'll pop links to those below. This is an adjustable bias binder foot. So again, this is being used on my Husvana Brilliant 75Q, but um, we do stock them for a wide range of machines. This one's compatible with Husvana machines groups one to seven, but I'll pop links below because we stock them for Brother machines, Janome, Faf as well, and all the compatibility details are on the website. If you've got any questions, just drop us an email. We're always happy to help. But this foot has got this screw here which will allow you to move part of the foot back and forth so that you can sew different widths of binding. So anywhere between a quarter of an inch right through to an inch wide and everything in between. So that's great and just means if you're working with lots of different widths of binding, this could be really good for you. The previous foot I showed you was a quarter inch binding foot. I inserted a one inch wide tape and it stitched out a finished width of a quarter of an inch. If I wanted to create a binding that was wider than that, I would need to buy another foot. Um, however, the previous foot does fold the fabric as you sew whereas this adjustable foot doesn't. So there's pros and cons of both. Um, if you want the one that folds as you sew, you'd need to buy different feet for different widths of binding. With this one, you can sew different widths of binding, but you need to insert the binding already folded. So I'm going to use a ready-made binding on this foot just because it's easier, it's already folded for me. Um, but you could use your own, you just need to press the edges in like on a ready-made. And equally with the previous one I showed you, I used um, a binding I'd made myself, but you could um, 
insert a ready-made binding you just need to press it open um, and also I, I stitched sort of relatively central down the bias binding in the last example but I've got a machine with needle positions which allows me to move the needle back and forth so I could stitch closer to the edge of the binding if I wanted to um, you can also move the foot back and forth with this screw here as well um, but certainly a, a needle a machine with needle positions is just such a fantastic investment a lot of machines these days come with that option but it's great for things like top stitching attaching binding sewing zips anywhere where precision and accuracy is required it's just a great feature um, and you can sew with different stitches on this as well you could do like a zigzag stitch because you've got a wide opening on the foot there i'm just going to sew with a straight stitch but you fold your, so I've got the binding, it's already got the raw edges pressed in. I'm just going to fold that in half again so that the folded edges come together. And then I'm going to insert that inside the foot. You could press it first if you wanted to, to make it really easy. Um, but once you're used to doing it, it really isn't tricky at all. So I've just inserted the folded binding in the foot. And I like to always make sure I've got a bit more coming out the end there um, just to make that nice and easy. And then just make sure the screw is adjusted so that it's butted up nicely against the binding and it's going to keep it at the right width and keep it in place. So I'm just going to give that, just make that a little bit tighter because it'll just keep everything in place as I sew and help me to sew really accurately. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. And then I just attach the foot to the machine in the usual way and put the thread through the foot in the usual way. So, and then just get your binding ready. And then just like we did with the last example, you insert your fabric into the gap between the binding and so, and it will attach the binding to the fabric. So it can be a little bit tricky to get started sometimes. You might want to sew just the binding first for a bit. Um, but yeah, if I just put the foot down now, it will feed the fabric through. If I just put that fabric in the fold, in between the binding, let's just make sure everything's the edges are lined up nicely. So it's folded accurately and we'll start stitching just insert the binding the fabric sorry into the binding and as you start stitching it will feed it through and just make sure the fabric's butted up against the inside of the binding and just take your time again so just make sure the fabric's butted up against that central like part where the two um, raw edges meet inside see there we've got a lovely neat binding attached really accurately just give that a little press and it looks fantastic really neat really professional and nice and easy so I hope you enjoyed that. As I said at the start of the video, everything I talk about is available on our website and you'll find links to our website and all the products below. If you like what you see today, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.